it, I guarantee this. If a pipe bomb ended up taking out like three or four prominent Democratic politicians, the immediate response from the Republicans would be that it was Antifa and it was a false flag or that they weren't actually killed at all. In fact, they would continue to say that for a long time. Nobody was actually killed. It was a sympathy bid. And then after sure. that, fu like fuzzles down a little bit, maybe a guy gets arrested or caught or the conspiracy is unwound and they're going to start defending them in mainstream media. Tucker Carlson's going to do a segment where he talks about how the, the person who actually planted the bomb was like a factory worker whose job was taken away by neoliberalism they're going to do everything possible to whitewash those people and there's no upper limit to that it could be biden it wouldn't matter the these people the republican that have been elected are are operating in a way which virtually guarantees the death of our democratic institutions unless something is done about that and i think the thing we need to do is encourage the Democratic Party to be as active and aggressively in favor of the good things in life as Republicans are for the bad, to be loud, to be unashamed in getting their voters frothing at the mouth and furious. It's the kind of furious that sends them out protesting, not just because of a once-in-a-lifetime, highly uh, media attention frenzy over George Floyd's murder, but over anything and everything the Republican Party is up to at any given point in time. To, to, sufficient to cripple cities if necessary because we are more than them the democratic party is larger and moderates independents they tend to lean our direction too yeah we could do okay. this we choose not we, to every day but but okay you're talking about politicians democratic politicians doing this everyone the Maybe media organizers everything on the ground but money i'm saying needs it happens what's the largest the largest protest in american history which brought the country to complete standstill for like a week was the George Floyd protest. The second largest protest in American history was the Women's March. Um, I think the third largest protest might have been the anti-Iraq protest. But, um, but certainly within the last few years, we've had the two largest waves of protest in American history, which, you know, I don't think the Women's March did paralyze cities. Democrats didn't certainly... do these, though. I mean, they were a product of antipathy at why the do the politicians have to be the leaders it's not that the politicians have to be the leaders it's that the woman's march was basically just if i recall correctly it was like upsetness at trump being elected it was right? that yes. right it did nothing and then the george floyd protests right and the george floyd protests have been successful in moving like the dialogue over but we need to be doing this every month of every single year like it can't just be like a once in a and then i'm gonna wait till like 2027 for the next big thing I, w there need to be coordinated efforts whether it's from politicians media leaders or people like honestly you and i because if we were republicans we would have institutional backing conservatives at our size tend to get funding from other organizations and our, like orders marching orders from the top down to some extent or another it's pretty common for them to co-op that big like illinois parent who uh, who had that big super prepared anti crt speech that got like clipped and recorded and shown all over news media that guy was a youtuber with a third of my subs now he is the face of parents protesting crt democrats don't do this but we could we have the power to, and we could get people angry all the time. We have to ask more of ourselves. We can't just settle for these random sporadic movements. Fair enough. I, but I think that people are angry all the time, and that Democrats are angrier than Republicans. And that Democrats protest more than Republicans, got more organic movements, more, you know, Republicans are pushing the anti-CRT shit. But Democrats, you know, BLM wasn't just something that came into being the day George Floyd was murdered. BLM had been existing for years and had, you know, I remember BLM protests that shut down, you know, whole like freeways and whatever in like 2015. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's been around for a long time and it's done a lot for a long time. So much of the activist energy, so a, a huge preponderance of the activist energy but is, yeah, is on the left. And maybe we could have more. And and maybe we could have more organization if we had it needs democratic to be focused politicians into a, a political weapon that we can use to crush them. It can, because raw protesting energy on its own is nothing. We can die in the in the battlements and the, against the gates of Versailles. It's nothing without some kind of coordinated organization. That's why Occupy Wall Street is such a laughing stock in retrospect, right? I'm not saying we should slavishly listen on every word to our politicians. I don't like Biden. I don't like any of these people. I barely can get up out of bed and like AOC these days. That uh, We just need some way of funneling this energy into tightly coordinated, media-savvy presentations that are effective 
in producing the kind of outrage that Republicans are capable of generating, you know? Right. Yeah. I, um, I mean, I, yeah, like I would like that, but, um, but there's also, there's the ancillary problem of the fact that while liberals are more mad than they've been in my lifetime, much more mad, and there's a decent number of them, a lot of people are just not that mad. And, you know, for every person who's like, like really riled up activist that you have out there, you've also got people who will go out to protest, you know, occasionally uh, when there's something big going on, but is not going to structure their life around being part of these movements. We need to make them matter. And we well, may be able to make them matter, but I, I, we've, if there's ways to make Americans matter uh, than have been done in the last, you know, six or seven years without impoverishing them. I don't know what they are. Republicans like, do it. Their angriest people are like upper middle class wine moms, right? I mean... Yeah, when you, you look at polls, Democrats are angrier than Republicans. I don't know what they, that... Republicans have some angry people. But when you look at like um, polls of like, would you let your kid marry this or that? Or like, you know, do you have strong fe negative feelings toward blah, blah, blah. Like, it's white liberals who register as the angriest. And that makes sense if you know any white liberals. They're so fucking polling, pissed off. But I don't You're see not them going that out. Unusual. I, I don't see them going out the way that like Trump supporters do with AR 15s in the back of their pickups, you know, menacing voters. You know, I don't see them getting their forums taken down online because they're threatening to murder Democrats. A ton of pro Trump forums had to be nuked right after the election because they were essentially just genocide porn. For, for like the culling of liberals in this country. I don't see anything right. like that for Dems, man. Their anger is like the righteous, indignant anger of a person who holds their pinky out while drinking from a wine glass, okay? Republicans <laughs> will suicide bomb voter booths. They're different. Their anger, not that I'm defending suicide bombing voter booths, but my God, their anger is exploitable by the politicians who lead them. If we, if you watch an hour of MSNBC and watch an hour of Fox News, the difference in tone is unmistakable. Uh, the the emotions they're trying to drive into you are so disparate. You know, it's unhealthy. But like, I guess I'd rather have people be unhealthily angry at fascism than complacently tolerant of it. You know, and you know, people's ability and willingness to complacently tolerate fascism is always astonishing. Um, well, it's, I mean, true. Yeah. Right. Back you're in, right. But yeah. you know, the, the difference is so, so I know this, uh, this old guy named Hank Reichman, uh, he's a professor at Berkeley. He, um, he was part of SDS back in the day and he almost joined the weatherman, but he decided he didn't quite like him enough to join him. Um, he was on his way down to the SDS meeting where, uh, they, the weatherman took over SDS and destroyed it. And then he just sort of fucked off, but he knew all those people pretty well. And, you know, he says, that, uh, you know, he's been around since that era. And he says that the right reminds him of how the left was then. He said that the right will blow up shit. They'll, you know, there's stochastic terrorism. There's just a pissed off minority. But overall, the culture isn't going their way. And the left is now being, you know, they'll, for all their rage in the streets, they're ultimately being more calm because they know that they're winning the culture war almost, you know, Slowly, but almost inevitably. It's true. At this point. And he are. said that just like the right realized that, you know, they were the majority back in the 70s, back in the 80s. Um, they were winning the culture war because they had the numbers. And uh, and the left just didn't. And the left got mad. And then leftists, like, blew up bathrooms or whatnot or occasionally tried to assassinate uh, Gerald Ford. Um, and then it all came to nothing, really. I mean, you know, it, it created for a lively couple of decades. But... Um, you know, we had 2,500 bombings or something like that in 1970, I think. Well, keep, maybe. keep in mind, I'm not advocating for any of that. Generally right, speaking, I, when I, the I right either. does it, it's an optical win for us. If the right, I'm, like with the Minnesota governor, they do shit like that, that, make, that just makes news days for us. 99% of the time they fail, the 1% of the time they succeed, we get to hold that on our belt for the next 100 years. So generally, Michigan, sorry, what did I say? Wisconsin? No, Michigan, my bad. Um, <clears throat> Generally speaking, like these acts of stochastic violence play to the favor of the other side as long um, unless you go like nuclear with it. Right. But I'm not talking that I'm just talking like have people show up at like town hall meetings. 
If you go to a town hall meeting, or a school board meeting, or a PTA meeting, or any of that, you, it's going to be disproportionately upper-middle-class conservative wasps. And they're the ones who get to dictate local policy because they're the only ones who are concerned enough about little Timmy listening to death metal from the, the school speakers during, during third period, you know, uh, to actually show up at these meetings. You know, libs will stay at home and watch people cuck their wives. I don't know, whatever they're doing. It's just, they don't get out there. And it's like... Is that what libs do for fun? I don't know. I respect it. If they do, then yeah, go for it. But things can backslide. Like, we're winning the culture war. That's true. On every issue that matters. Gay, trans, race, everything. Like, all of it keeps going up with time, right? But that's how it was in the Weimar Republic as well. We get complacent. In the Weimar Republic, this was the most progressive place in Europe. Uh, uh, people would go uh, to Weimar Republic to have vacation same-sex couples, you know? Guys would go over there because they could find gay couples and women lesbian couples. It was considered one of the most progressive places in the history of the continent. And then, six years later, the people who would have walked down Main Street watching, like, two women dance together were watching, like, trains pass by the tracks filled with Jews. Like, it, in, like, no time, everything slips back. And it's because they fought harder than their opposition. The Nazis fought harder than the SDL did. They fought a hell of a lot harder than the KPD did. And they won until they lost. But they did a lot of damage before they lost. Right. But okay, SPD. so here's the question. Wait, did I say but, SDL? SPD. I'm sorry. I can't. I don't know yeah. why I try naming SPD. things when I always forget the names. But SPD, not SDL. Sorry, SDL. Yeah. You're, I'm sure you would have done better if you were there. <laughs> He's a YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> No, so, like, Spain is the outcome we want to avoid. People don't like to talk about how the fascists in Spain did have a majority of the populace on their side, but they do. And that's why the Republic lost. I mean, yes, the Spanish had some outside, uh, the, the fascists had some outside help, and they had the more elite military units from among the military, but ultimately the reason they won was because they had, like, more of the country was on their side and supported fascism than, than any other thing, you know, all the other things combined. And so um, the idea, so in other words, if the, I think that people are worried that if the left gets too much, you know, burn shit down and blow shit up, too radical like that, it will turn popular mood against them and it will also turn the army against them so that if the shit hits the fan and Republicans do take over the country, the army doesn't bitch slap the Republicans. And I think that you did see the, the Milley interviews definitely indicate that the army was prepared to bitch slap Trump. Yeah, of course, well, they won't I, say I that. They won't say, I'm to... going to shoot this guy if he tries to do a real coup. You know, like, but but that was what was implied. Yeah. And, yeah, so the question is, like, do do liberals, if liberals go nuts and just, you know, go wacky and riot in the street and burn stuff down and whatever because of, you know, we've got to teach critical race theory and anti-CRT bills are terrible and blah, 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 and stuff like that, is that to our advantage? Really? No, or I don't, does like that, I, I don't yeah. mean burning shit down. Like I said, I just mean like participating with, with, with anger and fervor, showing up at these meetings and, you know, uh, yelling at politicians on the street when they have the audacity of showing their faces to the sun the way they do to ours. Um, like, stuff like that, you know? I'm not saying we should invite... I'm not saying we should turn into like the, the weathermen. I'm, I'm not inviting the 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 revolutionary okay. spirit into the Democratic Party. There are times and places for that. I'm just saying we need to be a little bit better at coordinating our outrage. I agree. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I'm glad we're both uh, anti-fascist, at least. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you're not anti-fascist, what are you anti? Uh, <laughs> if you're not anti-fascist... Degeneracy, I guess. You're anti-fascist, you're anti-degeneracy. If I don't know, like... Yeah, like that's that's priority number one is stopping fascist takeover in America. But it's also true that we're going to do it. We are going to stop a fascist takeover of America, and what twenty twenty four will twenty twenty four will determine whether we do it nicely or we do it the ugly way. Right. Just reminds me a little of how people talked about Trump too. You know, oh yeah, I mean, of course we have to beat Trump, but we will. Of course we have to beat Trump. Yeah. No, I'm saying what I'm saying is that. Fascists are not going to take over this country. Uh, 
if we have to stop them by actually fighting them and killing them, we will. But hopefully we won't have to do that. Wow. And to some extent, it's how hard they continue to push. But um, but I think ultimately they are chicken shits because they're economically comfortable and old. In Roblox, of course, I denounce the uh, the violent rhetoric of this uh, of this insurgent who I have invited onto my platform. <laughs> All right, just uh, clearing it up for exactly. Twitch. Um, right. No, of course. Yes. Uh, um, I, I look. I just. I want this country to be better for everyone who lives in it. Okay. Fascism is a death cult. Every time a country slips yes. back into it, it's made worse for everyone who lives there. Everyone. It's not like life got better for um, for like Aryan Germans under Nazi Germany. They lived in a despotic police state that recruited them to the military, denied them very basic human rights. I mean, it's it was hardly an improvement for them, and they were the best ones off compared to basically everyone else they shared their country with. So it's I just consider it a humanitarian principle. I also think that we need to basically politically disempower the Republican Party if we're going to have any chance of not all dying to climate change. Because, like, that's another big... That's another big one.